Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Stephen Hoffner. I am a producer, director, cinematographer, editor uh, in documentary filmmaking. It is uh, my pleasure to speak to you today about today's topic, which is documentary filmmaking, learning from the journey. It's really special to present this, especially because it has been a journey, <laughs> you know, to make my first feature film, which has uh, had a lot of success. And but, but one of the things that uh, Kumar asked me to talk about today wasn't just about the filmmaking process of, you know, everyone asked me, okay, like, what did you learn skill wise? What did you learn as a shooter or a director or as a producer? But what I want to talk about today is more of the human journey and how rewarding documentary production can really be if you allow yourself the opportunity to learn, not just as a filmmaker, but as a person, uh, you know, it, it was such a crazy journey to make this film. Uh, the film I'm going to show you right now is called Brothers on Ice, formerly called The Cannons. This is what uh, our distributor likes to name Brothers on Ice a lot better. But when we toured the film film festival uh, across the circuit, it was called The Cannons. But uh, I'd like to show you the trailer to start. And then I'm going to get into the story and journey of making this film. It all began in a driveway with his son and a few neighborhood kids. Now the longest running minority hockey program in North America. In one of Washington DC's poorest neighborhoods, it's changing lives. I have a saying, when I look in the mirror, I say, what can I do to help somebody today? Welcome to Fort DuPont Hockey. I guarantee you there's no other hockey club like Fort DuPont. I don't care what color you are. I'm like the puck. Puck don't care who hits it. I want to see you crack that ice. I'm trying to save you from going through what I went through. System ain't set up for us to win. What do you think about me being police cadet? If you like it, I love it. My goals at school, mm, it's a lot of them. I sent off your stuff for Johnson & Wales. The Capitals have a scholarship that I want you to do. The reason I chose hockey over other sports is because many black folks when, um, tried nothing different. We've been through a life-changing experience. We've been homeless. I shelter my boys. I have to, because if I don't, the streets going to take them, and I'm not going to allow the streets to take my sons. Yeah. You have to keep your grade average up, because I ain't got no money. I'm a poor black lady struggling. You know coach is not coming right there. Yeah, the wife is in the hospital. You need to pass these other classes to graduate. The hydro man came and turned off our lights. You gotta wait on x-rays and all of that. There's no opportunities here in this neighborhood. We live in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. I want to talk to you about our opponent, OK? Hockey in Newark, these guys getting better every year. This is a high school team you're facing. We have to protect the house. One, two, three, yes! To be honest, what this team mean to me, it's like, it's like another family away from your actual family. We have a troubled world today, and I hope we can all stop for a second and realize the values that we do have. The American dream belongs to everyone. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's, uh, it's really amazing to finally actually be, be talking about this process because I, it's something that I haven't really had a chance to do so uh, with very many audiences. And, um, you know, I, I think this is really going to be interesting for, for those especially that are not just documentary filmmakers, but are people with uh, curiosities and imaginations and people who just are in love with humanity as much as I am. How I came across this club was with my time at the National Hockey League, and I was a filmmaker with the NHL, National Hockey League. If you're from Canada or you know about hockey, it's sort of a religion of sorts. And in Canada, it was such an amazing thing to be able to work for the NHL. And when I was introduced to the story by my friend, uh, you know, it was interesting because I... Uh, I wanted a new challenge. You know, I, I had a day, a day job with the NHL as a as a features producer. You know, I, would, I had had so many great um, 
you know, experiences with the company. And this was a chance for me to do something on my own. And I was introduced to this club again, being a white guy from Canada. Sometimes, you know, I had to ask myself, do I even have the authority to tell, help tell this story? And we, me and my partner on the project, AJ Messier, we decided that, you know, being such hockey fans, we know about how to shoot hockey. Um, and it was our duty to help, you know, basically give more strength and opportunity to those who want to help, you know, initiate playing the game. And because hockey traditionally has been played by white people, we thought this would be great to embed ourselves in the community and help tell this amazing story about the Fort DuPont cannons. We had funding to create this film. We had about a half a million dollar budget to start with. And the private financing fell through just before we were about to enter pre-production. Uh, the gentleman actually passed away tragically. And we were left with, you know, all these amazing relationships that we had built through phone calls, through visits. And we just felt that we still needed to tell this story. This was an important story to tell. So we went all in and we made this film with our own blood, sweat and tears and our own dollars through my own production company at 3A3 Pictures. And the film was an adventure to say the least, but it was much more than just making a film. Uh, you know, I, I can honestly say that it helped shape me as a person. Uh, not only obviously did it, you know, hone my skill set, but it helped shape who I am. And it just shows how important the journey is that it's not just about making the doc, it's the process of making the doc that makes it so special and the people that you learn along the way. And, you know, I want to talk a little bit about this adventure and these people that I came in touch with. So as you saw from the trailer, Robert is a high school. He's in his final year of high school. They live in Southeast Washington, DC. Uh, Robert and his mother, Carolyn, who is a cancer survivor, the both of them, Southeast DC is a very difficult area to live in. Lots of violence, lots of uh, poverty, a lot of history surrounding that area regarding racism. It's a, it's a very difficult area to grow up in. Robert is a very sharp and in intellectual individual, uh, very smart, but street smart too, right? And then Carolyn is this bubbly, larger than life persona that we just love these two characters to be part of this film with us. Then we have Rayvon and his mother tomorrow who have it even harder. They, you know, Robert and Carolyn at least have a house that they, uh, that they own that was passed down to them. But tomorrow and Rayvon are basically living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, Rayvon, all he wants to do is play hockey. He just wants to go to school and play and play college hockey. And obviously the social economic factors around that are sort of against his favor. And we felt that following the two of them, these two young boys and their two families was really critical. In addition to the club and coach Neil Henderson, who you see at the forefront here uh, is, is one, an unbelievable man. And he has led this team for over 40 years, volunteering his own time to help these kids in this uh, impoverished area. So I just want to show you quickly. So this is me day one filmmaking it, uh, with this film. It was uh, in the summer of 2017. And as you can see, I'm the only white guy in this area. I'm from Canada, completely different country. I, I have total fish out of water. And that's, and to be honest, you know, I was a little intimidated. You know, some of the kids were kind of like, well, who is this guy? You know, and I, I came in, um, you know, optimistic and I was trying to be respectful. I wanted to build relationships and, but I certainly didn't feel like I looked like I fit in. And I just want to show you a picture of the banana colored shoes that I wore day one of this production, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best idea. I'm like, not only am I the only white guy, I'm like the whitest looking guy you could possibly imagine in this area. So, um, and here I am with all this expensive gear. I have probably $20,000, $25,000 worth of gear. And I'm in Southeast Washington, D.C. And we end up going to Rayvon's house for the first time. And I was scared. There was uh, a gathering outside his house. There was a bunch of guys having a, a cookout or something like that. And here I am with my banana yellow colored shoes <laughs> and uh, 
super pale white skin. And here I am coming with this, all this gear with a bunch of strangers who have no idea that I'm showing up. And I was really nervous. And I didn't, I knew the first thing to approach was my, my, my best way of approaching was just using respect and not, you know, trying to come in with prejudgments, but next, but, but my instincts were like, you should be fearful. You're in a very dangerous area, whatnot. And I remember when I walked by them, I was just like, Hey man, what's up? And they were all like, Hey, Hey, what's up? You know, what's that? You know, what are you shooting? You know, they just all had questions and they were the nicest people. And that brings me to the first lesson that I learned while shooting this film, the human lesson, which was don't judge anyone, especially your subjects without getting to know them first. This was such a critical lesson for me to understand and learn because um, you know, especially if you're making a film, don't come in with prejudgments. You might have ideas about who people are, then you can ask questions. But I can tell you that this area is a, you know, I guess from a statistical standpoint, one of, if not the most dangerous area in America. And I came with preconceived notions about the type of people that might live in this community. And I can honestly tell you that everyone was so respectful and cool and we shot there for a long time. I'm going to tell you how long uh, without any interference and everyone was very open and, and receptive, but it, I had to come in with respect. And that's all people really want at first to, is to feel respected and not feel judged. So the reality of this place, this is Rayvon here peeking out his window. He had just told me about getting robbed uh, at gunpoint. The other character, Robert, was also robbed at gunpoint during the course of our filmmaking. So the reality is, yes, you might have with preconceived judgments about uh, people or sorry, the area. And that might be correct. It is a dangerous area. So, you know, you have I had to sort of put my my hat on and go, OK, like, you know, I, I trust these my, my new friends here, uh, but I also have to be cognizant of the world around me. And at the time of the filmmaking here, uh, Washington DC was uh, had a high crime rate. As of 2023, the area that we shot in now has the highest crime rate in the entire United States of America. So we were walking into um, a very dangerous area that has a history of poverty. This is uh, tomorrow Rayvon's mother who has witnessed murders, has witnessed a lot of horrible things in her life. And she's a product of this cycle of poverty, uh, living paycheck to paycheck. You know, this is the type of area that, you know, that we encountered while while being there. But the fact is, is that it was important to not. Yes, you might be, have these preconceived understandings or judgments about the area. But why? Why are they? Why is this so dangerous? And so when I realized exactly what was going on in this area, I realized through lots of research with my partner, AJ, that there was a lot more than meets the eye going on here. And the lesson number two was do your research. There is context to everything and everyone. The area of Washington, D.C. became poor because of desegregation. And when, when the civil rights movement happened in the United States, a lot of the white people moved out of the area. And then when the black people in the area tried to get mortgages to get out of that area eventually and integrate more with white society, they were... Uh, rejected for mortgage and for mortgage insurance. They were they were rejected with mortgages. They could not get out of that area. They literally could not be homeowners any uh, in in Washington D.C. So what happened? They had to stay where they were. All the rich white people fled that area, and essentially what happened was is that Southeast and Washington D.C. became uh, you know a, a very you know uh, impoverished neighborhood in in America, and it was. For the most part neglected by the government because dc is is actually federally run it's not regionally run so it was important for us to to understand the characters and the stories to do the research and understand okay well these people there's danger going around there's violence but why what is the reason for that and that and i learned so much that research is so important you know <laughs> when you make a documentary everybody it's so important to understand that you have to understand it's a grind it's a grind from from day one and if you're trying to make a documentary it's not actually meant to be glamorous <laughs> because you're going to throw yourself in situations that are for the most part not scripted right it is a documentary 
So you're going to get dirty. You're going to get into places. This is me in the left here, um, you know, doing a voiceover in a vehicle at the end of a shoot with our subject, holding a mic to his head, you know, under his mouth after a 12 hour day of shooting. This is my partner, AJ, in the project who's on the ground with a slider, you know, getting the shot. It was 72 uh, days of filming over the course of two years that we shot this film. I live in Toronto, Ontario, and I had fl and I flew in and out of Washington, D.C. over the course of this whole time. Making a documentary film is not easy. And when I came into thinking, well, you know, when we had that budget with the private financer at, at the first, I was like, OK, I'm going to stay in hotels. It's going to be whatever. But I actually embraced the hustle. I enjoyed the fact that I was eating macaroni and cheese on the road. It was fun. And it made me a better person because of it. This was my setup during the pandemic. It was a, a, a <laughs> this is a, a, a table and a chair that I bought from Walmart for like 50 bucks. And I had started editing the film and we had, everything was on lockdown and I had just started putting this together. This is over 300 hours of footage and I was in the middle of a move. So I had moved provinces actually to New Brunswick, Canada. And I had, you know, this was basically on just me to put this film together because I had the proficiency to be able to edit sound, be able to edit picture, do color. It was a learning experience overall. And I just want to show you a fun picture here. This was the a timeline snapshot of my Premiere Pro timeline with all the little edits. There's a lot more in between there. I couldn't fit it in, in, the, in this particular screen, but... You know, I would not recommend doing everything yourself. That's for sure. And if you have a budget, you're going to have more people, more eyes on it. It will be that much better. But nevertheless, the lesson three that I learned was anything worth doing takes hard work. And I'm sure if, if you stop yourself and you think about some of the things that you've accomplished, even people who are parents, anything that is, you know, <laughs> that is lots of work and that takes time and effort is is worth it right and the things that are easy you probably don't recall with such ease and um and, and and such happiness because it's it's not it was it was in fact easy to do but it's the things that you really either struggled to do or worked really hard to accomplish and the things that you remember the most and i think it builds your character uh, as a person and as a human being the fourth lesson that i learned was through some of the people in this area. So Carolyn Roberts' mother was just a wonderful, wonderful woman. She uh, happened to grow up, born and raised in Washington, D.C., Southeast. She grew up on the streets. And when I say on the streets, she wasn't homeless, but she grew up around violence, crime. She lost three brothers to murder on three different occasions. She taught me about patience and having love even in the face of such adversity. And of course, I spoke earlier of Coach Neil, who is probably one of the most unbelievable men that I've ever met. I like to call him like the Martin Luther King Jr. of hockey. Uh, Coach Neil was preaching Black Lives Matter before it was a trendy term. Um, he's never treated anyone differently based on their skin color or with their social economic background and is, was such an, a model individual for me to meet. Uh, he teaches hard work and discipline that everyone must earn their keep to get what they have. He never allowed anyone to just kind of get something for nothing in his program. Uh, and he's and now I'm actually uh, happy to announce that I'm becoming a father any day now my spouse is expecting. So um, the teachings that I've learned from Coach Neil, I feel have, are going to serve me well as a father. And so lesson number four, when documentary filmmaking is that you can learn from anyone. It's much more than just making a film as the people that you can learn from. And the last point I want to make everybody is this, and it's probably the most important, um, that in order, to, in, or, in order to make a film, you really have to do your best to embed yourself into the community and, and build relationships. And what me and AJ realized is that the relationships that we built were, were far beyond making a film. We were at graduations we went to you know coach neil's inauguration into the hockey hall of fame uh, you know i was part of you know i was there when rayvon uh, just had his first baby 
I was there for birthdays with Carolyn and this is where it kind of gets emotional, but you know, we were there when people passed away <clears throat> and, uh, you know, Car Carolyn had passed away from her cancer diagnosis <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I had to, you know, I gave a speech at her funeral and, you know, AJ was a pallbearer at coach Neil's wife's uh, funeral. So, you know, when you build relationships, it makes the experience so wholeheartedly better and so much more fulfilling. And this was Carolyn's celebration of life. The cancer took her life, but we we certainly wanted to celebrate what she she did for all of us in our lives. And that's me with her sister there, and obviously that's with Robert and a, and a family uh, a family representative there. And so the last lesson is relationships are everything. Making a documentary is much more than making a film. It's it's meeting people. It's uh, it's growing as a person. And it's, uh, you know, learning life's lessons along the way. So uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, it's my pleasure to share my experience with you with Brothers on Ice. We're hoping to get distribution soon. We have uh, several networks like Paramount Plus and Roku and uh, Peacock, NBC, looking at it as we speak. So hopefully uh, you'll see it soon. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining me today.